Hey guys, welcome back to the other craftsmanship. My name is Dustin. Today we're going to be making a hidden tang file knife. And we're going to be using antler as the handle material. Uh, we're going to have some stacked leather as well, and we'll have brass for the bolster. So when I am deciding what to do with files to make knives, I start out with my files and I kneel them in a the fire. Uh, I have all that process in my knife making video, so check that one out. I'll put a link in the description below for that video, which goes through the whole process of annealing. But once I've annealed the, uh, the files in the fire, then I can decide what I want to do. If I want to cut off uh, parts of it to make a full tang knife like this one, or I can cut it tw in two parts in half so I can use uh, a smaller blade uh, and use the end of the file to make a hidden tang. And then I have what's left over usually is enough to make kind of a smaller carving knife. So that way I get two knives out of the file. So today I'm going to be using um, one of the small pieces to do a hidden tang knife. Uh, again, we'll be using the antler, and so I'll be stacking that with leather. And I just recently got some new bolster material from Jantz Knife, knife Supply online. So let's uh, open this up and check it out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the material of the file, uh, the file markings on the sander. So you can see here how this will work. Uh, this tang will be hidden inside of the antler with the brass in between and the leather. So that should uh, should work out really nice. But first, we're just going to clean this material off. That way, we have a, a clean surface to start with, and then we can lay out the bevel and uh, start working on that. I've taken off most of the file marks. Um, sometimes I like to leave a little bit. I think it's just kind of interesting to show the, the history of the blade. It starts out as a file. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the center of the cutting edge. So the easiest way to do that is just to darken the whole edge with a marker. enough show us the line and then you always want to turn your knife over and mark from the opposite side so that way and usually you'll end up with two lines that are pretty close together but that way you know that right between those two lines will be dead center so those are pretty close see them a little bit but that gives us our center line, and that's what we'll bring our bevels to. Just picked up a uh, new belt grinder. It's a one by 30 inch grinder from Harbor Freight. Um, so what I did when I got this, the first thing I did was I customized the, the plate here. So you can see I trimmed the back off so it's at an angle, so that way I could tip the whole plate back and uh, that way I have my right angle and I you know, brought my angle gauge down, tested I think it's set to about 12 and a half uh, degrees right now. So on both sides, it gives like a good, a good bevel edge. Um, I have a piece of angle iron here. So what I'll do is I'll clamp this to the angle iron and then this keeps it at a 90 degree angle straight up from the edge. And then I can run my, uh, run the knife back and forth and it puts a really even bevel on this. So you can see here, I've made a small mark 
on the on the bevel edge so that's where I, I marked off so I know where to start my plunge lines on both sides so that they're even So as I'm going, I'm just applying pressure in different areas. So you can see my bevel's a little short on the tip and a little thick here. So I'll apply more pressure to the tip and a little less pressure to this uh, the belly part here. Kind of still even pressure across the, the main part of the blade. That's so awesome. It, it really makes knife making faster. I mean, you, I can get such a clean bevel. You know, you can see I'm trying to keep these two lines, the top and the bottom, parallel. So just like a little bit of pressure. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, but you really get to the feel of working the blade across, uh, across the grinding belt. So I found this starting at the same spot, working across and uh, and then changing up pressure, I can really um, create a really beautiful bevel pretty quickly. So it makes it fun. So all right, we're gonna switch over to the other side and start working on that bevel. And then we'll kind of flip flop back and forth until we get down to a pretty close edge before we do the uh, heat treating. So you can see now where I've adjusted the table, you can see where the grinder is biting into the bevel. So I'm gonna to try to work that edge all the way back to my initial bevel edge. By the time I get back there, I should, I should reach the center line on this bevel side. So I'll keep working that edge back.
right, so you see I've got my bevels back pretty even. I'll have to work on these a little bit more, but uh, I don't want to go too close. I don't want to take it too far down now because I don't want to take the chance of warping the blade in the, uh, the heat treat. So we're going to set up the forge, uh, get this in, and get it heat treated so that we can get in the tempering oven and uh, start putting it together and do the final steps. blade into the forge now. I'm going to put it in for uh, two normalizing cycles where I bring it up to non-magnetic. I'll test it with my magnet. Make sure it's non-magnetic. Right now you can see it's magnetic. Once it gets up to I think it's 1500 degrees, it would be non-magnetic. And, uh, and then I'll let it cool down, air cool, get it back in, do a second normalizing cycle, bring it up to, head, up to temperature, let it cool down. And the last time I'll take it out and I'll dunk it in uh, vegetable oil. All right, so we've reached uh, non-magnetic, so I'm gonna take it out, let it sit and let it cool down, air cool down. So it's cooled down, so back into the forge for a second other normalizing cycles. time in the forge, let it heat it all the way back up to non-magnetic, and we'll pull it out and we'll dunk it in the vegetable oil. that I'm, I thought at first I was just cleaning it off black. I may be cleaning just off black, but it feels like it might be biting a little bit on the tip. So I don't think it hardened as much as I wanted to. I think what we'll do, get it back into the heat. Probably because uh, we're 
doing it in vegetable oil and I just don't think it's cooling down quick enough. So I'm gonna take it, hit it, heat it back up and then we'll dunk it in the water and then we'll test it again. It's skating really nicely now. Much better than before, so. I think we have now successfully heat treated the knife. It's nice and hard, so we're gonna go and put it in the oven. All right, so now we'll give it two hours and take it out, give it a second round, and be good to go. We're out of the oven now, just finished up our two cycles of tempering. It was in the oven at 400 degrees for two hours each time. Uh, and so now we're going to uh, move to the grinder and take off the forge scale. I can see underneath of the, the, the forge scale color that the blade is tempered to a straw color, either a dark yellow or a light orange. That's what you're looking for when you're doing tempering. We'll make sure that the color of your uh, metal is around that straw color. That's a good tempering color. So. Take it to the grinder and uh, clean it up a little bit and move on from there. All right, so I just finished up with the 80 grit belt and I'm gonna switch to a 120 grit belt. That will uh, bring the edge of my blade down to pretty much my final finish. I like there to be a little bit of, um, just the finest amount of tool marks in the blade. And uh, this will look really nice with the 120 grit belt. All right, so I'm coming up on the edge. You can see both edges are coming together. So I'm trying to bring that line almost all the way to the edge. I want to leave it a hair thinness on there, and then I will uh, I'll sharpen that down by hand. But I'm coming up to the edge slowly. Brought the edge down to almost a complete grind. It's just a hair thickness on the edge now. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut the choil, use the file, round file to cut the choil out of here.
I want to make sure that these edges again are nice and flat where my bolster is going to come down and meet. A couple, cut a couple grooves in here with the grinder, um, just to give this uh, the tang a little bit extra hold when I use the epoxy and put it into the handle. Next step we are going to do is determine the the size of the piece of brass for the bolster. Now I want the bolster to be just a little bit uh, bigger than the top where it meets the knife. So I might bring it out of just a smidge, just going to taper down. So I'm thinking about maybe a sixteenth of an inch on both sides. And then the thickness needs to be, it's gonna be smaller than the bone handle because I'm gonna taper the bone handle down as well. But I still want it to be good size thickness. It has to be able to go that. So I'm gonna go out about a quarter of an inch past on both sides of the knife. So it's fitting pretty good. There's a little bit of a gap, but I think it'll be okay.
So at this point, <clears throat> we're pretty close to the final size. I'm gonna leave it just a little bit big. Uh, that way when we, when we fit it and glue it all together, um, I'll still sand down. I wanna be able to sand this down uh, onto the rest of the handle material as well. So this is gonna come down even more uh, once we clamp it all together and glue it. So we're gonna use a piece of brass from a symbol. Got this from a buddy of mine, Matt. Uh, he traded me a symbol for some artwork. So I like to use it, it's nice and thin so it'll act as an accent so we can have the brass bolster. We'll have a piece of leather in between and then we'll have another piece of brass, another piece of leather and then an antler. Yeah. So I'm gonna mark off and cut a piece, small piece of brass to use and then we'll shape it down. together really nicely. Nice thing, once I oil up the leather, it'll darken up as well. So we have the dark of the metal and then the bright brass and the darkness of the leather will be nice. We'll transition between the two, a little bit of a contrast. It's always good to dry fit, test everything multiple times before you glue up. So I just have now drill out the antler and get it all together. So we've just finished up cutting all the pieces. We're ready to put everything together. So I'm gonna use a five minute epoxy, a two part epoxy. It's a uh, part resin and part um, activator. So I'll mix those two together 
and it gives me, I would say, about a three minute working time. Um, the five minute epoxy starts to set up pr pretty quickly. So you, once you start that, once you start mixing and start rolling, you gotta make sure you get everything glued together really quickly. All right, we are all glued up. I got a lot of good squeeze out all the way around, so I know that I have glue in filling all the gaps. Uh, I've cleaned up the knife. I had a little bit of epoxy on that, so I cleaned that up. And uh, there's a little bit of epoxy on the brass, so I'll clean that up. Um, just using my fingernails and scrape that off. It's mostly off though, so. We're gonna let this sit overnight and dry, and then we'll come back and shape the handle. All right guys, so we glued up the handle overnight. It's all glued, all dried up, nice and secure. So we're gonna move to the bandsaw, trim off the excess, and then we'll move over to the sander and work on shaping it down to a nice handle size.
Man, that looks sharp. Oh, literally. That looks nice. So just uh, toss this up a little bit more on the uh, buffing wheel. And then we'll oil it up. And that leather will pop out. It'll look really nice. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna work on just bringing the final edge. It's pretty close, but I'm gonna bring the final edge down to my grinder and then we'll uh, oil it and then do the final sharpening. This is boiled linseed oil, which I use for all of my axe handles and shovels and most of my knives as well. It's just a good kind of universal oil. It works the best, obviously, with wood. It's not going to make too much of an effect on this uh, antler, but it will uh, penetrate into the leather, preserve the leather too. All right guys, so we're all finished now. And just finishing oiling up the handle. It's looking really nice, the brass bolsters and leather. So let me test it out, I definitely sharpened it. It is exceedingly sharp now. So it's definitely gonna be a good, a good carving knife. Um, I'm a little undecided right now. I'm not sure if I want to cut off the handle or if I want to leave it the same length. Right now you can kind of see I got about maybe two inches or so on the end. So we'll see. Uh, put some comments in the, in the comments below and see what you think. Let me know if you think I should cut it or if I should leave it long. I kind of like it this way, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so comment if I get a lot of consensus that they think maybe it should cut off. I'll do a short little video, cut it off, and uh, do a tag end of this video. So. Go ahead and leave me a comment, and uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet, and keep in touch, and we'll, uh, we'll make some more stuff. So, hope you guys like this video, and we'll see you on the next one.